Today, we are thrilled to have Gerilyn Marburger, Director of Global Events at HP at Hewitt Packard Enterprise. So awesome having you here. And thank uh, you. Welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, I'm excited. All right, so I'm going to give a little background on you. So uh, Gerilyn is a seasoned event strategist with over 25 years of industry ex expertise. With a remarkable portfolio, she has spearheaded large-scale corporate events for industry leaders such as Roche, Syntex, and orchestrated sports and entertainment extravaganzas for notable entities like AOL, New York Yankees, I'm from New York, that's really cool, Chicago Cubs, and Time Warner. Her impact extends to consumer goods events for renowned companies including Coca-Cola and the Home Depot. As the global director of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Gerilyn leads initiatives such as the HPE Discover User Conference, where she has consistently exceeded attendance goals since 2015, contributing significantly to the incremental pipeline since 2019, and the HPE World Watch, a weekly webinar series. <laughs> it's tough. Don't huh? listen to him. It's, it's tough to having him. to listen to your accomplishments. Um, all right. Well, I love, you know, you've had a great journey and, um, and and you're you're having an awesome journey and you have experience both in B2B and B2C events <laughs> from product trade shows to curating experiences for sports and entertainment. Like I mentioned, how do you navigate the different dynamics of these audiences? Uh, are there strategies that make events not just and, and what are strategies that make events not just successful, but truly memorable? But let's stick first with the dynamics of, of the audiences. Um, is there a difference when you're talking about B2B and B2C when you're creating events? Um, I think there probably is. There's an exercise that I go through before every event that I do. And um, I've always likened marketing. You, you got to wear multiple hats. And believe it or not, one of them is, a detective, one of it is a sociologist, and you always have to be an accountant too. So you, you can't just be an event marketer, you have to be all these things. And why I say a detective is when you when you look at a show, you you have to look at the context clues. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to look at your audience. Why are you going there? What are their motivations? Why where where are they coming from? What's their journey? And what are they looking to get out of a trade show or event? So you got to zero in on the customer. And then the second part that I do um and and I don't know if this is for everybody but this is how it works for me. Yeah, of course. Um, is I, I kind of like a sociologist, right? A so, sociologist look at the study of group group dynamics. So you have to look at, you know, who's going to be there, you know, age, sex, race, you know, demographics, their level of expertise, business acumen. Are they engineers or are they salespeople? Or are they CEOs? You know, where are they on that scale? So you have to look at all those demographics. And then you also have to look at where their interests lie. So getting into the head of the customer is the first step for any B2B, any B2C, any, any type of event you do, you want to put yourself in that customer's shoes um, because I, I just think that colors everything you do. And mm. it seems very simple and rudimentary, but when I go to an event, I, 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 it might've been telling you this or somebody else, if I know where the trade show is and I know where my meeting room is, I walk that and I figure out how many steps, how long it's going to take, because I don't want my customer to arrive at a meeting frustrated, sweaty, hot, especially if you're in Vegas. I mean, I want to mm -hmm. make the experience as pleasurable for them as possible. So everything to me starts with the customer and it starts with getting into their mind and how things should be for them, what their experience will be. So I would say it's the same, but that first piece is always the same for me is the customer journey. What's so. um yeah, that that second question which 
had to do with strategies that what strategies make events not just successful but truly memorable. I want to break that down a little bit. Um, unless there's already something that you have in mind that you want to share, but I, I I was thinking of of actually going a little bit deeper into that and beginning with what what are what are your biggest challenges every time you are thinking about uh you know, about an event that you're putting together? I think the biggest challenge for any event marketer across the board is, is your offering compelling enough that people will want to attend? Mm. And and that could, that could be a trade show. Is it, are you going to provide them with information that they're looking for? If it's an event, is it an event that it's been on their bucket list that they want to attend. So you have to look at what you're, what you're offering. I mean, if you are going to want to buy a pair of shoes, you're not just going to accept it sight unseen. You're going to look at it. You're going to see, okay, are they leather? And do they have a heel on it? And you're, you're going to want to do, you're not just going to, you know, plunk your money or your time, either one of your assets um, without really analyzing whether this is going to provide a benefit to you. Mm. And so I think that's, um, are there, are, how do you know that it is time? Let's say, I know that there's obviously we're, we're talking about, um, when we talk about events, there are many different ways of participating yeah. in events, yeah. right? But let's just say if you were thinking of hosting your own event, right. For that, okay. for, for your own organization, yeah. uh, how do you test or when do you believe that, you do have enough of a community to invite or uh, that there is that, that value proposition. An appetite for it. Exactly. Yeah. How, how do you know, it's, or how can you test? It's, and that's really hard. I mean, that I, again, I wish, I wish I had the magic formula because, mm. you know, for even doing this for 25 years, there isn't any surefire slam dunk. And I wish there was, I, I, I thought about that. And it's one of the other questions you were asking me, there's, there's no guarantee and you do need to keep it fresh. You need to keep your content current. You need to provide something that people want. Um, you can't tell them what they want. You have to find <laughs> out that, that's right. where it comes with all the questions and stuff, asking all those questions. What is it they're looking for? You know, right now, everyone is AI, AI, AI. Um, you know, and we're no different. Mm. There's a huge AI thrust in everything that we're doing because that's what people want to hear about right now. Um, and what I was going to say, one of your questions about what makes something um, memorable, memorable. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would always say, at least for me, and this is probably also my personality and my, where I come from, but um, I think you to make it memorable you want to do something unexpected you wanted to do something that's a little bit whimsical and fun tongue-in-cheek something that shows that you are not you can laugh at yourself and you can you don't have to be super serious so that way they're they can feel like they can be comfortable and um and I think you can't be afraid to be daring and to take risks just because things have been done a certain way before, doesn't mean you have to do it that way again. Mm. Nobody's going to remember it if it's been the same way year in and year out. So you always have to tweak something and um, just just keeping things fresh. I mean, that's human nature. You know, do you want the, to eat the same food every day? Probably not. I mean, you, <laughs> you want variety. And so it's the same thing. Again, it, it goes back to what, would if I was the person and I'm paying $1,900 for a registration pass, what is it that I'm getting for that 19? You know, consumers are smart, customers are mm. smart, and yeah. you need to give them that respect and do and provide them with a value. When I like to jump a little into the balancing budgets and, and creativity. Uh, Cause you're talking about doing something unexpected and yeah. right. Like how, how do you create that memorable experience? But then everyone is restricted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't just do, uh, you know, have the massive budget for everything. 
Um, so how do you approach budgeting for, for large scale events and what strategies do you use to maximize impact with, without overspending? How do you balance those two? Well, that's what I was talking about earlier about event marketers always need to be an accountant too. Mm. You, you can't just, you know, be able to just execute an event. It's everything that goes behind it. And you need to know um, where every dollar and penny is are going to. Um, and the thing that I always tell a lot of like early careers is time is your friend. The more time you can give yourself, the more runway, the more opportunity, if things happen and they are going to happen, you can, you know, swerve, pivot, do whatever you need to do. Um, I had a situation like that just recently and I hadn't had something like this in a long time, but mm. um, I had a show in Las Vegas and everyone knows Las Vegas is already expensive. Mm. Las Vegas is also a union. Um, most of the shops there are union. So that's an, an added increase. So I was like, okay, you know, I already know that I've got, I'm contending with that. I'm contending mm -hmm. with banks. I'm contending with unions. Well, what I didn't really think about was the setup for my show was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So Ooh. if I had people work on Thanksgiving, that would be like triple time. But if I didn't have them work on Thanksgiving, I would lose a day. I mean, I would save money, but I would lose a day of my setup. And did oh. I have that latitude to be able to do that? So, you know, you're always looking at things and juggling things and being able to have a contingency plan and say, okay, Col totally forgot about, you know, Thanksgiving and the builder <laughs> that we use, I mean, they are from the UK. So they, sure. you know, Thanksgiving's not on their mind, their radar really either. So it was, um, it was a big overage and I don't usually have those. Cause I, I will tell you, I, I take, you know, any event marketer has been entrusted with their company's money. Mm. So you're a steward of your company's money. And you want to be a responsible steward of that company's money. At least that's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always like, ooh, you know, I know what I have anticipated we would spend. And I want to go back and, and be within that range. You know, you could always be a little bit on or off. But the beautiful thing about this Las Vegas thing is I knew it with enough time that I could, you know, talk to my internal finance team and prepare them for that and also prepare for where else I could cut mm. and the places that you can cut are the places that you're the only one that's going to notice not the customer <laughs> and I was able to do that I was able to skim certain things I mean you you have to make trade-offs do you offer a full meal or do you do a buffet do you offer a buffet or do you do past hors d'oeuvres you know do you have full alcohol or do you have just beer and wine you know these are all the things that you have to make decisions about that can um that can really help you in you know keeping your budget in line but right. I, I think time and i think just constant just awareness is is really key is just being aware of all the balls in the air. And there's a lot of line items. I mean, I, any event marketer will tell you. I love that. That's a very, that skill set of being able to place your mindset in, in that of your audience and understand what's something that seems like a big deal to you, but might not be to them. Right. right. <laughs> that's a really, that's a really hard one to, I mean, it's, that's a great skill set to have. Yeah. To be able to, to well, and it it can be something really simple. I mean, common sense. I feel like in our day and age is so underrated because a lot of times it it comes down to common sense. Like I had planned to have all these branded you know, cups and napkins and this and that and the other thing, you know. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, okay, if I just have branded cups, that's what people are holding. That's what they're walking around with. Do I need, you know, they're throwing away the plates, they're throwing and away napkins. the napkins. <laughs> yeah, as right. I said, do I, is that a way where I can cut, but the the attendee experience will not be diminished? So like I said, it doesn't have, it's not brain surgery. A lot of times it's just, you know, 
thinking, okay, what can I do? You know, figuring things out, being resourceful. Let's jump into engaging, uh, acquiring an audience. Um, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> all this is, all this is brutal. Uh, it's, it's I mean, the, the, the event space, um, I've, I've, I've had some experience on this of hosting a number of events. Um, and, and I think it literally is one of, and I've had experiences also of, of, of building companies from scratch and all that. And I gotta, I gotta give it to uh, event leaders. It's the most brutal it's yeah. it's the most brutal, um, nerve wracking <laughs> experience. It is. Um, it's the it's the hardest part of the job. No no questions asked. Oh my god! And I feel like you know when um, you know for for founders out there, I always say if you haven't had experience in sales, go and try and sell anything because it's very humbling. It's a very humbling oh, yeah. experience, and it allows right. you. I kind of feel like the same that if 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 you have if you want to really connect with your fellow event leaders, like try and do one event for yourself. It's so, small scale, anything. It, 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 <laughs> and see how brutal that is to try and build is. empathy on on how you can, you know, all the factors, all the things you gotta keep in mind. So um when it comes to engagement. What, how, how do you keep engagement high before, during, after events? Like what, what are some things that you have seen or that you've experienced or that you've directed that you have seen have worked for you so far when it comes to engaging your audience before, during, and after? Okay. Well, first I would say, and, and you just emphasize this to any event marketer is just starting out their career. That is, this is audience acquisition is the most difficult part of your job. It doesn't matter if it's a trade show. It doesn't matter if it's an event. It doesn't matter if you're inviting somebody to the Super Bowl or the Kentucky Derby. People always come to me and say, oh, that's so fun. You get to do all these things. And it is. It's great. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of upsides. But there afterwards is, there, no, no <laughs> when you can rest before, uh, before, there is yeah. <laughs> no slam dunk there is no there is nothing i i would have thought i did a concert series with luke bryant and i would have thought slam dunk everybody wants to go and have a meet and greet and do all this i would have thought i would have had no problem filling spots mm. and it wasn't that my offer wasn't compelling it's that the level that you target to when these are c-level programs they get invited to everything. They mm. get invited to everything. Now the competition so, is f even is ab fierce. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and like I said, there isn't anything other than maybe the Academy Awards that would be a slam dunk that you know you could you could fill a program for that. And um it's a matter, and it's the same goes for trade shows. Trade shows, or if it's a third party trade show you're not responsible for its acquisition. So that's not as much an issue. If it's your own, if it's like an HPE owned or uh, owned trade show, you are responsible for that. And that is just an unrelenting grind for the six, four, three, two, one month before. It is a constant beating of the drum, um, working to expose what you're, whether it's, social, digital, you know, uh, EDMs, um, which are mass mailings, um, to having sales, you know, providing sales with um, enablement kits, elevator pitches, whatever it is, it has to be a constant cadence of information. And it's got to be a constant drumbeat because it's, if it's not top of mind, people are not going to engage. And if you let time pass, they're, they're going to move on to something else. I mean, it's, it's really tough. It is, I, I will not lie to anybody. You mentioned, you just mentioned about, um, you know, uh, with sales and sales enablement, uh, ha like the kids, have you, how often, and, and maybe this is specifically with HP or it could be in any experience that you've had, uh, or again, from your colleagues that you've experienced, but how close is the relationship when you're hosting your own event 
to make sure that you're you're you are in communications with that marketing team with the sales team so that you really understand what what the messaging what's the right messaging yeah. that works like how how in sync is all of that do you do you and how much time do you allocate to making sure that that communication is is flowing between the teams that matter most so yeah. i would i would ask first like what teams actually are are there certain steps that you take uh, before an event, before you're thinking of of what this next event is going to be, let's say next year, are are there who are the individuals that you find yourself speaking with more, and yeah. and that are important to make sure that everything is in sync? I think you have your event will be more successful if you get buy in from all these various stakeholders, and I think sales is enormously important. Um, I know people always think it's like this weird thing between sales and marketing, but each of them need each other and sales is, is the engine. And, you know, we need sales to drive this engagement. And so, you know, my job is to mark as a marketer is to give them the tools that they do this. Luckily at HPE, we have, we're a big company. We have a whole team that does sales enablement and provides um, all the collateral that they would need. But <clears throat> sales is key to the success. And I think some companies do it better than other companies. I mean, just in my own experience, I've seen some that are so engaged. And the ones where sales is super engaged is where you, you see tremendous success. And your audience acquisition job is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, companies like an HPE where it's so matrixed and there's so many solutions and there's so many products um, you know, there's a larger sales force. So it's, it's, it's harder to corral that. But when we've had success, it's been when we've engaged with them, when we're on sales calls once a week or twice a week, you know, sharing with them what we're doing and why this benefits them. It's kind of like that. Help me help you. Mm. I, I, I'm bringing this to you and this is how you can use it to be more successful. And, you know, when you've got that kind of synergy between your sales and marketing, it's fantastic. And it, it, it does make the audience acquisition that much easier, but it's really hard because everybody's got their own objectives. You know, my objective is to drive registrations. Sales is driving registrations is important, but they're also trying to close out the quarter. They're mm -hmm. trying to make their, you know, they've got a billion other objectives that they're trying to reach. So I think it's also just being understanding and, um, you know, where they're coming from and trying to be <clears throat> not compassionate, but just understand, you know, what they're up against. They're getting a thousand emails every day. Yours is maybe getting a lost in the mix. What can you do to differentiate? But I do think um, sales is huge. I mean, and I'm not just saying that because both my husband and my daughter and my son are all in sales, but I think <laughs> it's super, it is. I just, I know the value of it. And when it works, it is, it's amazing. It can be great. So. Are there, um, are there certain pitfalls <clears throat> that come to mind that for, for a, a, event leaders out there when it comes to when you are thinking of setting up your event, any, any, any things that come to mind that you say, you know, uh, always make sure, and, and you covered this a bit in terms of like, understand your audience, right? Yeah. You've got to understand your audience. What are their needs? What are their wants? Uh, how, how do you envision that experience? But bes besides that, are there, are there any other pitfalls that come to mind when it comes to setting yourself up for success for for a particular event, and um, and and we can go this, we can take this in different directions. If um, yeah, because you mentioned trade shows, and I know that trade shows are are different. It's it's a different type of entity than 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 a you know than a seminar or right. right. Uh, so like uh, any anything that comes to mind when it comes to I guess best practices or avoiding pitfalls. I, um, I, I did 
something for early careers recently and and they that's what they wanted to hear about was you know what 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 makes a successful event marketer what what characteristics or qualities that you need and um i said quite bluntly if you're not organized this is not the industry for you this is <laughs> not the and i and i don't mean to to you know discourage anybody i concur but, yeah, there is so many moving parts all the time and you are responsible for all those moving parts. And if you don't have some kind of system that works for you or an organized mind or um, a strategic mind, it's it'll be that much harder for you. So if if somebody is like, I'm super organized, I'm a really strategic thinker, I'm not only thinking about right now but two weeks down the street it's you know the, the street you know what i meant yeah, down yeah. The calendar three months six months if you're that kind of person and that's the kind of person i am where i can visualize the whole picture from end to end and even post event then this would be the the market for you um i think you have to so i think organization a number one strategy is key that level of empathy or putting yourself in the customer's shoes seeing things um further than what's at the end of your hand i mean you have to be able to look at things from a different lens um for me curiosity is really important i'm naturally curious so that works for me but i can't tell you the number of ideas i've gotten from some rabbit hole i've gone down because i was researching, I don't know, Taylor Swift or something, and then went down a rabbit hole and they <laughs> gave me some idea about something else. And I was like, oh my God, this, I could implement this in a way mm. at our trade show or an event that would be new and different and it would, you know, satisfy my objectives. So, so curiosity, organization, um, like I said, time, time management. If you give yourself enough runway to do something, you give yourself time to make mistakes and you're going to. And that's okay. And you just brush yourself off, try and fix it, move on, forget about it. Um, so those would be like the gospel according to journal and where you that makes need com to complete sense. You you mentioned that you 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 develop and execute C experiences for C level uh yep. you know, professionals for a Kentucky Derby and and Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, by the way, so this Super Bowl was that a thing too? Was that what's No, we did not do that. Oh, it okay. depends on a, a lot of times um with HPE we have sponsorships with uh various companies. Formula 1 is one and Disney is one. So a lot of times our events that we do are you know in conjunction with something like that. In other places I've been, um you know, it could be the executive, you know, is a big golfer and wants to take people to the masters. It could be the K Kentucky Derby. I've done New York fashion week twice. Um, oh, that was cool. for like a, mm -hmm. a female audience. We were trying to, to talk about women in AI and um, we had a, an amazing panel in the, um, in New York city. And then after that, we, um, we took them to a fashion show. It was back in Mishka. It was amazing. And, you know, that's one of those experiences that people, don't often have right they're like oh that's kind of cool and i was like in that case that was one of those unexpected curiosity things that just worked we we were opening up a new office in new york city in bryant park and it was going to be in september and they were like Geraldine, can you do this i'm like sure and so I was like, okay, how can I make this interesting, different? And then I remembered Brian Park used to be one of the, it was on the fashion week route. Mm. And then I also remembered that the second week in September is also when fashion week is in New York. So this was, I did the first one in 2019 and I was like, okay, this would be a great way of introducing our new office space. So I, I uh, themed it all around like, HP is getting a makeover and it went with the whole fashion industry thing. And we decided to focus on women and women in technology. And, um, and they were from companies. We got companies like Ralph Lauren and, and people that were in Ulta, I think was one of them. And so we got people that were in the industry and then 
others that were just interested in, in the subject matter. I um, love that. Yeah. And it was really successful, but that's one of those, like, how'd you get from, you know, the opening of a new office to fashion week. And it was like, <laughs> you know, that's how the mind works, but connecting, again, connecting the dots, seeing is, what's available during a yeah. certain time frame, all those yeah. things. It's also being curious and saying, okay, how can we make this different? How can we make this interesting? What and connecting the narrative. Too. Yeah. Like that, that narrative. That was a little bit of a stretch, but you know what? It, <laughs> it, it ended up coming together and people are like, I did not see that coming. And I was like, yeah. How, how do you, we talk about engagement. We talk about acquisition. How do you, how do you think about community, you know, building a, building a community from not just the networking aspect of things, but how do you make sure that you really allow for, for, for that community feel to take place? Are there, um, are there certain tact? I wouldn't say tactics, but are there certain things that you keep in mind? And maybe it's not. Maybe it's not exactly within your division. Maybe that's that's something that's in line also with the with 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 the overall marketing team. But how do you right. go, how do you go about community building from from events? Is that is that a thing? It should be. If it's not a thing, it should be a thing, because communities are so important to your company, to your corporate culture, and selfishly to audience acquisition. If you have a built-in community, your job as an event marketer in terms of filling those seats, it, it, it improves incrementally. It, it's astounding. Um, one of our divisions has a very, very, very strong community. People are rabid. I'm not going to mm. use names, but they're really amazing. <laughs> I love heads. it. They're amazing. Uh, but anyway, they have such an amazing following across the globe that their audience acquisition is that much easier because they've had this built-in set of um, like-minded individuals, birds of a feather, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. that, that are very anxious to... to um, you know, explore new opportunities, share opportunities and get information, you know, information exchange, which is really key because, you know, any company you work for, you're not doing everything right. You're not doing everything 100% right. Um, and it's nice to hear where you could improve from an objective outside source. That's why customer testimonials are, are very effective and um, advisory groups. And those are all from communities. Mm. And, and HP has got a couple, you know, we have a tech community, um, you know, we have, a, you know, an influencer community, you know, we're made up of a variety of them. And I, um, in, during COVID, during that virtual event series, I really understood the, the value of building up that group of like-minded people that could get together, um, especially during COVID, it was really important. And each week meet up and we found um our the number of repeat attendees grew each from week to week to week to week and that's how you build a community you and this was and this was virtual hybrid this was yes. both it was virtual it was during oh, the virtual. pandemic during, the, during height the, of the pandemic, pandemic. yeah got it wow have yeah. you maintained that um again it doesn't no. have to no no it's, no it's, we did not um because you know what it's it's crazy because when the world started opening up, it was trade shows were very slow to come back, but they started coming back. And by probably like the third one, it was like people were let out of their cages. They were like so excited to get together. I mean, I had parties that I had to continue paying for the food and drink for like an hour and a half after because nobody wanted to leave because it's been so <laughs> long that. since yeah. they had been together. And I was like, oh, I need to plan for this next time. Next time there's a pandemic, hopefully never. But, you know, people <laughs> people right. want to. And I think they're a little, um, I think people are still a little, this is just my opinion again. Um, that time was really 
challenging and out of the ordinary and Mm -hmm. and we were our entire world was affected i mean short of short of a world war this is the only thing that affected every single person on the planet and affected every single industry i mean we're not just talking you know your family or your home you're talking healthcare and business and entertainment and sports and uh just you know travel everything education everything was impacted by this so um i don't even know where my train of thought was going but um, (laughs) no no yeah okay go for it yeah no i was just saying so i think because there was that you know two and a half year period and people associate that with these virtual meetings that they're not ready to go back since Mm. in person is an option is an option now they're not ready to go back full virtual. That's not to say they won't, uh, because sometimes that's the only way you can consume your information. Right. And sometimes if it's a short snippet, I mean, I don't usually like to watch videos on the news, but sometimes I do. Um, you know, if it's a short snippet, like a one one minute, 30 second or five minute or even a 30 minute webinar, um, if it's short, I think people will still engage. A hundred percent. Are you bullish on... Um... Hybrid, virtual, uh, like, you know, now, nowadays, obviously live, it, it, it feels at least that it's, it's back and, 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 and better yeah. than ever in terms of live events. Um, what are your thoughts about future events and, uh, are, are you, are, are, is most of your time spent on, on these live massive conferences yeah. and, um, when it's not that, is it a lot of, are there webinar events? Are there, you know, are there a lot of webinars There's or some, things like that? Or Okay. I, I don't usually do those. Um, you know, obviously I did during the pandemic. And mm. if there's a, a lot of the events that we go to are, are hybrid events. So there is a virtual component to it. And I do like, there's a lot of things to like about virtual. You know, I, I don't think we could just throw the baby out with the bathwater because there's there's a lot of good to it. You can, you know, people can access it anytime they want to on their schedule, which is great. Mm. It's quick information that's at your fingertips. Um, I think that, um, again, I'm losing my train of thought. Maybe I need to have a No, no worry. So you're Um, saying with virtual, you're, you're, you're describing some of the pros that you see when it comes to virtual. I was going to say the content can live on, which is, I think a great thing. You can Mm. repackage your content in different ways. And, and, you know, in HPE, we've got HPE.com and HPE Live and Seismic and a briefcase and Discover More Networks. And we have all these massive tools that we can use to have our content continue in perpetuity, which is great. How do you how do you repackage live those conversations, those those discussions that take place in live events, how does that, uh, is there, like, have you had experience with after an event is done? So I'll share with you some of the things I, I've experienced. Um, okay. You know, I, for instance, I went to a conference uh, a couple months ago in DC. It was for content marketers and, and three full days uh, must have been like 5,000 attendees, something like that. And when when we left, about a month, the conference ended, ton of panels, right? It's That's one of the hard parts yeah, as an audience, right? right? You, you got to pick between those four top panels because there's about 15 panels right. going on at the same time, you know, right. so you, uh, throughout the course of the day. At the end of the conference, we um I got an email maybe like a month later with a link to being able to purchase um the full recordings of 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 the panels that took place and and it was the charge of that, like a digital pass, let's say, but like the charge of that was half the ticket price, and it was right. literally just to access a full recording. So if I want to go back and listen to something right. that I didn't get to listen to, what bl- blew my mind was that's crazy that uh as an audience, you know, 
I feel like someone that goes to a conference, they, they're looking for a playbook. They're looking to, they're looking to learn. They're looking to uh, see something new, see how they can apply what they learned into what they're currently doing. What's right. right you know, what works, what doesn't work. Um, and they're trying to connect the dots and, and, my experience from that conference, which has been similar to most conferences, has been like it's it's up to the audience member to figure out what how to connect the dots and and how do you actually gain access to the things that were said at these live conferences that make sense for you? You know, how do you access that and and how can the conference on the other end make make that available? Um, any any thoughts on that? And, and and I mentioned this because of what you're talking about repackaging, that virtual, right. it's easier to repackage, things are uh, recorded in live, a lot of things are recorded too. Right. Uh, but like, how do you then go about, uh, you know, repackaging things? And I, I, I don't know, have, have and, and that could easily be something that's not on in, in, in under your responsibilities, but um, I was curious. It's, yeah, it's not in my scope per se, but when there have been some, say we go to a third party um, and somebody, an executive from our company gets interviewed, um, we find out where it is. Usually it's on YouTube or something like that. And then after that, because a lot of times it depends on whether you can own the content or not. If it's mm. your own show, then you own the content. Mm. Um, if it's a third party show, then a lot of times they own the content. And they can put it where they want to, and you can redirect people via a link if it's something you want to share. Gotcha. But again, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to get mislead anybody because that's not my forte. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do not... think it's it's valuable because you know you've spent the time to put on this virtual event and share this content and program this content um, and curate it. That you should be able to do something with it after. And, you know, so that way it it, um, it kind of pays incremental dividends too. So your initial investment is kind of making you, you money or you're using your investment. When, when we talk about the success of an event, what type of uh, KPIs uh, are, are, what do you keep track of when, and, and you can take whether it's an event that you're working on now yeah or an event from the past, but what are, what are things that have been your guiding light when you, when you are looking for what that success means? This is an age old question. <laughs> and, and it never gets easier to it answer. It never gets <laughs> easier. I mean, we've been working on this pilot for like 14 months and I feel like sometimes I'm like, okay, are we any closer to getting a resolution on this? Um, I think, you know, I think metrics and tracking is very important. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very, each, every event marketer should try and understand it because the only way you're going to get funds to do a show or an event the next year and the next year and the next year is if you can show some kind of data of in measure the success. Now, a lot of those measures are pretty subjective. So one of the things you measure is if somebody goes into a booth and all the number of scans you get. Now, the scans that come in, some could be really quality. People have a really good conversation and the people ask for more information. Some people just want to, you know, get a cup of coffee that you're offering or a tchotchke or whatever it is. So those are not, you know, as, you know, valuable um, they're valuable, but they don't, they're not, I would say it's, it's a quality conversation. Um, so I think, you know, there's those kind of metrics you can use. We also um, have developed a really strong meeting center program meeting system. So that's when- What people, is it called? Uh, 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 just a meeting center. Oh, so meeting center. Center, like a meeting center. Oh, okay. So, and we make sure that we have accommodations for that, whether it's tables, chairs, private, rooms, semi-private rooms, whatever it is, um, audio visual if needed, um, because you figure if somebody is accepting a meeting, they've agreed to give you their time for that hour or 30 minutes or whatever. That's a quality conversation. Mm -hmm. They want to hear what you have to say and you want to hear what they have to say. So that's a quality conversation. 
So the more of those you can get, I think, again, this is all um, not super scientific, but these are like, not anecdotal things, but these are points of data that you can use and say, okay, we got X amount of booth scans. We had X amount of customer engagement in the meeting center. Um, I think a lot of historical data is really, really important. I keep everything and I file it because I always want to know what came before so I can measure, you know, and see how we did as a baseline. I think that's documentation and historical data is, is huge and super important. Um, I think those all feed into the KPIs, you know, tracking or tagging opportunities via the lead flow process and every company does it different, whether it's Salesforce or Marketo or whatever system they use, um, you know, being able to track things that way. Um, but some metrics having at least a handful of metrics is is super important and should not be undervalued. I love the meeting centers. I that that makes yeah. com, that makes complete sense. That's very rational in being able to keep count of that and understand yeah. what what that means. What you yeah. just said when someone is sitting there, it's it's them giving you their time yeah, and consent. and wanting to learn yeah. about that particular product right. or that particular service. Uh I want to make sure I I highlight the the two events that um that you're concentrating on. So it's we have HP World Watch, which is the weekly webinar series. I don't know if that's it, and then HP Discover. Discover is the is is the conference is is that's the, our user conference. And I and actually in in all truthfulness, um, I am in a global role now. I used to be in North America. And that's when I was responsible for the audience acquisition for Discover. I'm still involved with Discover, but on a different level. Um, so, but that is, that's uh, what we call HP's largest sales call, because it's an opportunity for all of our customers and potential customers, prospects that want to know about what HP is doing in the market. And there are so many amazing things. We are so on the forefront um, a lot of people are just coming into AI. A lot of people are just coming into supercomputing. A lot of people are just coming into hybrid workforce, um, you know, hybrid computing. And HP has been, that has been our mantra since I want to say 2015. Wow. So we have really been on the forefront of this line of thinking. So now is the time where it's really coming together for all of us. I always say people should invest in our stock because it's, it's low right now and but it's not going to stay that way because it's there's so many great things that are they're coming down the, the pipe for us yeah. um, and it's a synergy of a lot of work that the company has put together over the last couple of years last 10 years probably and it's coming to fruition with what's going on you know how, how timing is key mm -hmm. you, know, you could have a great idea but if the yep. the world's not right for it or if the industry is not right for it, whatever is not right for it, it, it won't be successful. But this, I feel like we're all at a juncture, um, especially in technology, where we're at the, the forefront of, of what's to come. And we're at HP, we're positioned and prepared for that. That's so, exciting. I didn't mean for that to be like a total. Like, no, yes, no. Team, I mean, I, wanna, I, I wanted to learn uh, more about uh where it's at and, and what's taking place and all that so that that's that's wonderful yeah, great, that you it's a great company to work for i i would highly recommend it to any anybody that's looking for a role because it's I, very you can tell i mean in, a, in I, I love that i love that you're you know you you, you have the pride for uh, yeah. and the love for the things that you're doing um People are respectful and collaborative and you know and you're allowed to to try things and fail fast so can't ask where, anything more. where now, first off, with congrats with, with this broader, much larger role that you have that's yeah. global now, where is most of your time uh, spent now when you talk about events? Is it, you know, because that's a major conference. That was one that you were, that used yeah. to take, you know, most of your time. Yeah. Uh, what, what's, what's this new um, world huh. look like for you? 
It's well, we're still kind, we're still trying to, you know, navigate and figure it out. We just got a new VP of events and she's amazing. And it's, I, I anticipate nothing but amazing things coming forward. Um, so with the global role, you know, it's, I've been able to, I've done, you know, conventions in Dubai, I've done them in Saudi Arabia, I've done them in Germany. Um, I've got to go to a lot of different places and see how different cultures do things um, the same and differently. And that's always great for an event marketer because it really just broadens your mind. Mm. Um, so a lot of my time is spent with that. Um, the next one I'm coming to is in Germany. It's a supercomputing, international supercomputing, um, which, you know, HP is the leader in, in high performance supercomputing. Again, nice plug. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. That's so wonderful. Um, well, yeah. I know we've I've, I've taken up a ton of your time. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And again, uh, really appreciate you. Enjoy the weekend. Okay. Take care. Thanks again for the time. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Bye.